The Naratinib uh, combination uh, study is really a summary of two international phase two trials looking at Naratinib uh, in combination with uh, Temsirolimus, Temsir which is an mTOR inhibitor. Uh, also, Naratinib in combination with Trastuzumab, uh, a HER2 targeted monoclonal antibody. We did the two, two trials in parallel, and we uh, thought there were many similarities as we targeted a, a niche population. It's patients with HER2 mutant uh, non-small cell lung cancers. These are, this is about 2% of non-small cell lung cancers and, and uh, uh, often occurring in never smokers, uh, in, uh, more common in women uh, and even younger patients. So it's... Uh, it's a different population to uh, to KRAS uh, and others. Uh, and there's no approved therapy for these patients either, so it's an unmet need. Uh, so naratinib is a, uh, a, a pan-HER uh, small molecule uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor, and uh, it's FDA approved in uh, HER2 amplified breast cancer, and this is a study looking at lung cancer that are driven by HER2 mutations. The... Uh, the, the so-called uh, uh, Puma uh, 4201, which is in combination with Tempsirolimus, uh, in that study, we showed a uh, objective response rate of 14%. So there were some responses uh, in the 43 patients treated. Uh, we also saw a clinical benefit rate of 48.8%. So there were some tumor shrinkages uh, and uh, durable, uh, stable disease. The duration of response was very wide in terms of confidence interval, as short as 2.4 months, but as long as more than 22 months and still ongoing. So uh, some patients did benefit uh, approaching two years and still doing well. Uh, now, uh, the Neratinib Trastuzumab uh, trial also looked at, that's the SUMMIT trial, and that combination showed a, a confirmed overall response rate of 8%. So not a very high response rate. However, it, uh, there were patients who had durable benefit as well. So we did have a, uh, a clinical benefit rate of 29% and a duration of response ranging from six months to uh, more than 18 months and still going. So we also did a comparison with what's already published with neurotinib monotherapy. So uh, this, these results were already published uh, uh, in uh, uh, in terms of the uh, the Nature uh, uh, paper uh, about two years ago uh, by uh, Dr. Hyman and colleagues, and I was uh, part of the team, and the compared to the neratinib monotherapy, which showed a uh, confirmed response rate of four percent, this is an improvement. So, and we looked at the uh, clinical benefit rate, we looked at durability of response. All of those were numerically improved. So it, it gave at least a uh, uh, a consistent uh, picture that the combination can improve efficacy of neratinib single agent. Uh, so, uh, and the tolerability, toxicity with the combination, we also showed with good uh, diarrhea prophylaxis, because diarrhea is the number one side effect for, for neratinib. With good prophylaxis using loperamide proactively, we were able to control most of the uh, toxicities. Uh, so the safety profile was also uh, accept acceptable in, in that trial. So in the end, uh, neratinib as a monotherapy had limited efficacy, but if you combine it with other agents in the pathway, including mTOR inhibitor temsorolimus or, or uh, trastuzumab, the, uh, uh, the uh, monoclonal antibody against HER2, you could actually increase uh, potentially the efficacy and and therefore, uh, this is a proof of concept that neratinib combination is a strategy that can be further explored. And therefore, novel combinations of neratinib uh, are currently being pursued uh, in clinical trials.